Hi and welcome to Dave Barlow Guitar and in this video I'm going to talk about uh, a little project I've got going on um, with a guitar. Now uh, basically I decided that um, I used to have an Explorer guitar uh, and unfortunately I can't get my hands back on that anymore. Uh, that's long gone. Uh, but anyway it's another story. But anyway, so, uh, so I thought, well, I'll get another Explorer. Um, obviously, criteria being that it just needs to be an Explorer shape and it has to have a mahogany body and a mahogany neck. That's it. That's my only criteria. I don't care who makes it or whatever else, or as long as it's in, it's in reasonable condition uh, and I can work with it. So uh, I was looking on the, I was looking on eBay uh, for quite a while and some other places. Uh, you know, there's all sorts of uh, great deals uh, on on these types of guitars. Mainly Epiphone seem to there seem to be plenty of Epi, Epiphone um, explorers. So I thought, well, okay, Epiphone's okay. That's a good make. Um, uh, we'll look at Epiphone. So um, I was I was looking on eBay and there was a few there which uh, I didn't want to spend so much money on. And I'm talking I'm working on a real budget here. My budget uh, for Touchy Barley so was um, two hundred pounds. I found one for a hundred and fifty pounds or uh, or English uh, payment units, whatever you want to call it, hundred and fifty quid. And uh, unfortunately, I missed out on that one. Uh, somebody else purchased it before I could get to it. Anyway, I found uh, I found another guitar. Um, for 200 quid. This is what I found is there seems to be a lot of um, e uh, Epiphone Explorer Gothics uh, which is the matte black um, version of the guitar. It's got a kind of nice slim neck on it and um, it's made of mahogany. Mahogany neck, mahogany body just like uh, an Explorer would be. Uh, if it wasn't, you know, made of Karina wood, obviously. But anyway, so that's kind of what I was after. So I thought, well, um, really, I want something with a, a natural finish to it, but uh, it's really difficult to find one with a natural finish that isn't Karina and second hand, 350, 400. Didn't I? Haven't, I haven't got that money because I want to do other things with the guitar. So, um, so basically, I purchased in the end uh, one of these, which is an Epiphone um, Explorer, uh, the Goth version. Uh, and basically, it just basically looks like a heavy metal machine. Now, the color, uh, yeah, this is kind of not my scene. Uh, this is not my thing. I, I don't like matte black. It looks a bit heavy metal for me. For me, uh, but it doesn't matter because the whole deal is is that um, I, 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 I want to see some natural wood. So basically, there's a couple of things that's going to happen to this guitar. I'm going to take um, whether you like it or not. I'm going to take the paint off this body. I don't know how I'm going to do it. Yes, I might rub it off. I might burn it off. I have no idea yet, but it's coming off. I'm going to keep keep the hardware. I'm going to keep the uh, the the, uh, the this plastic. This is really shiny, actually. Uh, anyway, I'm going to keep the pit guard and all that kind of stuff. So uh, basically, I'm going to rub this all down back to the wood, a bit like kind of like the V, because I like that. I like the wood thing. Also, um, it's possible for a laugh, because obviously this is a project, right? It's a bit, it's a bit of fun, but it's going to be a musical guitar. For a laugh, I might get, I might get my, my really clever artistic uh, wife uh, to do something, maybe, maybe do something here, maybe do some kind of illustration or something. I don't know yet, we haven't decided uh, on here. Also, um, these pickups, um, not really totally happy with these pickups. To me, they sound a little bit muddy. Uh, not very distinct at all to me, to my ears. Uh, so obviously we're going to swap these pickups out. Um, this guitar is not going to be a metal machine. This guitar is going to be like, I don't know, this guitar is going to be like a, a 70s rock machine. That's what it's going to be. So it's going to have... Uh, it's going to have perhaps some some um, some lower output pickups in it. I'm, I'm going I'm going for like ACDC kind of guitar. I mean I know it's a I know it's an Explorer, but I kind of like that. Um, I'm going to go for like an ACDC kind of Angusy kind of sound uh, with this guitar. So we got the right we got the right wood for it, um, and we, everything's kind of right for that. Um, so we're going to put we're going to put in. A first. This is this is this is really really new for me. This is an Iron Gear Blues Engine pickup. Ah, I hear you say. Ah, you've already told us about them. Yeah, I know about that. But what I didn't tell you about, if I can get if I can get this off, hang on, because like they they come well packaged and you can't get the damn things out sometimes. But here you go. This is special. 
It's completely different to anything you've seen from Iron Gear before. Although it's the same pickup, yes, it's a Blues Engine pickup, but check this out. This is a raw nickel cover. Why am I excited about that? I don't know, because raw nickel excites me. When you put it in the guitar, it doesn't look brand new, it looks older. Do you know when you got an old guitar, you got an old guitar and you put a brand new set of pickups in with a cover on it, and um, you put them in there, it just doesn't look right. It just doesn't look right. But if you get a uh, raw nickel and put it in, they're new, but it looks right. It's not all shiny and stuff. So there you go. The other thing, great thing about nickel cover is like, if you use a nickel cover, the sound you get is like not having a cover on it at all, which is pretty cool. But if you like covers on your pickups, this is cool. Also, a great thing about nickel is it ages quicker and a little bit more gracefully. So you get that kind of old look a lot quicker with your guitar with um, a nickel pickup. They just look awesome. I just love them. I don't know why. So we're going to put this in this guitar. We're going to take the paint off. Um, I don't know what else I'm going to do to it. You know, I'm going to play it a bit. Uh, I might even refret it. I might even show you how to refret your guitar. Do you know if you take your guitar down, down to... Um, down to a shop and get it refretted and all that kind of stuff. And they charge you what? I don't know, a couple of hundred pounds, maybe a bit more than that. Plus they're gonna have to change the nut for you and all that kind of stuff. You don't have to pay that sort of money. If you kind of like want to do a bit of DIY on the guitar, trust me, it's not that difficult. It's not that difficult. As long as you take your time and take it easy, it's not that difficult. I'll probably show you how to do that as well. So um, I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. We'll see what it needs. We'll start, we're gonna start making the guitar look the way we want it to look. Then we're gonna put the, the pickups in. Hopefully it's going to sound the way we want it to sound. We're going to check all the electrics, make sure everything works there. If it sounds like we want it to sound, and it looks like we want it to look, then we'll have a look at you know refining some more things on this guitar. But this is kind of an ongoing project. You may see me change clothes or change my hair or whatever, because obviously this is going to be done over a period of um, a few days, maybe weeks. I don't know. But um, you know, this is the this is the start of it. This is where we're going to start for it. We pay two hundred quid. Um, probably uh, and then you've got your pickups and everything else for now I mean I don't know how much money we're gonna spend on it but when we finished it's gonna be a pro guitar when we finished it's gonna be a pro guitar that's all I can say so um, yeah so okay next thing we need to do is strip this thing down I'm not gonna show you all that uh, I'm just gonna get on with the job I might put some pictures of stuff maybe I might video some of it I don't know we'll see how it goes I haven't worked it out yet I know in my mind what I want to do I haven't written it down because that's boring. So, onwards. So here we are, we're stripping the guitar down, I've taken the strings off. Um, uh, I've taken the uh, scratch plate off. Uh, I'm gonna desolder all the wires. I'm basically just gonna take the thing to bits. One thing I thought I'd uh, show you is uh, uh, the studs which hold the bridge in uh, and the tailpiece, the studs here. Um, Actually, uh, a lot of people don't know how to take these out safely uh, and without damaging the guitar. Basically, it's pretty simple. Um, these uh, are sometimes glued in, uh, so uh, uh, sometimes they're not. So you just got to be careful with it. Basically, you get a bolt like this, uh, and you, with the correct thread, and you thread it in. And usually, I find that I can, this is why I use this is. Uh, um, is I can actually do it by hand usually and I've done these three already by hand and they should pop out there we go sometimes you can just feel it go sort of pop um, there we go Come down. and then you can do it by hand or you know you can use your screwdriver or it depends what kind of whether it's a, a nut or not but basically you can see that's coming out I, just, I screw that in just pulls the stud out Point of this exercise is don't let things like this stop you from like upgrading your guitar and doing stuff. It's most stuff to do with guitars. It's generally quite simple. The, the, you don't need much skill. Uh, I don't take that the wrong way, but you don't need a heck of a lot of skill to do this thing. Um, I'm doing it. I don't have a lot of skill. Um, yeah, I can't wait to show you how to do a refret because that's going to blow you away when, when you find out how much that costs uh, and how easy it is to do. Um, if you just follow some simple steps, um, 
it'll blow you away. But anyway, we're not going to do that just yet. That's probably another video. But I'm going to continue stripping this down and unsoldering or everything, taking it apart because obviously we're going to take this uh, this paint off the top. I know it's sacrilege, but that's what I want. As you take things apart on your guitar, um, take pictures so you know where everything goes. Um, sometimes um, you think, oh no, I'll remember, uh, and you do. Uh, a lot of the time you remember how everything goes back, um, like pick up heights and things like that. It's just really handy if you just take a picture. Sometimes, you know, you'll start a project and something else will happen and, and, um, and you know, you won't get back to it for two, a few days or even a week uh, and then you realise, oh my God, I've forgotten where all that goes. So, you know, take pictures of, you know, when you're taking it apart, take pictures of it uh, as to where all the wires were and where everything sat and, you know, um, heights of bridges if you want to, uh, you know, if, if you want to make your life easier. Um, yeah, take pictures of all the wiring, just take pictures of everything. And that way, when you put it back together again, you can check your phone, check the pictures on your phone, and pff, be easy peasy. Okay, uh, I didn't take a video of this, because uh, it's really difficult. Um, but basically, what I did was, uh, firstly, I got some, some tape and masked off the area which I didn't want to damage on the guitar, obviously. Uh, and I masked it just over the ridge. So... Uh, when I was actually when I get round to sanding uh, with a flat sander, it 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 kept a really good line. Um, difficult to show you that, but that's what it did. And basically, I started sanding it, and I realised quickly that uh, it's going to take me ages, and I just couldn't be bothered with that. <laughs> so yeah, so I just um, so I just got the the old paint gun out. Uh, which hasn't got a flame on it. It's just like a paint, uh, like a heat gun. You'll see that in the next, in one of the pictures here. And I just burned it all off very, very carefully. Burned it all off very carefully. Went around the edges to burn it all off, and then afterwards I sanded it down, uh, which you'll see now. Okay, so I got a bit of a dilemma. Um, I've sanded it down, and it's kind of sanded down okay-ish. You can still see some slight dark areas where the paint has kind of seeped through. Also, um, the more I sanded it, the more I could see this line here, which is uh, this three piece, three pieces of wood make this whole section up, this whole guitar up. And the more I sanded it, the more I could see this kind of line here. So I thought, this one's okay, this one looks nice. It, it, it's kind of, but this one, for some reason, you can kind of see I don't know, it looks like you kind of see the gap or a glue. Well, it's not a gap. You can just kind of see where it's been put together. Okay, maybe I'm being finicky. But anyway, so the finish is kind of, I like wood. I like to see the wood, but it's it's too pinky. You know, it's too pinky for me. I, I, want, to, I want to darken it up. So what I could do is I could put some stain on it. Um, but then I didn't really want to put stain on it. I, I kind of, I like the burnt look guitar, which I've done um, to a couple of guitars, because they, they kind of age in a really nice way. So um, so what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm just going to lightly kind of tarnish it with, with a heat gun. Um, so, yeah, it's a bit of an experiment, but I think, you know, it, it would work. Um, well, I'm hoping it will work. So hopefully it's just not going to you know, be black and white. We're going to get some kind of tarnishing of, of some type, hopefully. So uh, fingers crossed. Here we go. So I'm going to test uh, this piece here because uh, see how much of a burn I need to put on. Uh, test it here, perhaps, or here, and just see what, what's going to happen. Because I don't know. Let's go and heat up a bit more. Ooh. Oh. So just a little bit. Gonna give it a little bit of a little bit of a burn. Yeah, kinda like that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the edge. I'm going to make the edge slightly darker 
um, than the rest of it. Let's see what it looks like. I'm kind of creating like a, a burn burst, if you like. So, starting at the edge and just kind of whispering it in. Now, I just keep doing that until I get this kind of burn burst. give the, the finish a little bit of burn character I know you think I'm crazy right but I am just, I have just invented a new finish for a guitar it's called burn burst if you need help hang up and then dial the operator if you need help hang up and then dial the operator if you need help hang up and then dial the operator Okay, so look at the colour of that now. I just put some uh, crimson, uh, crimson guitar finishing oil. I'll leave it four hours, and then do it again. Okay, so it's had uh, two coats of um, what is it? Yeah, this guitar finish. Um, Crimson guitar, guitar finish. Anyway, yeah, so two coats of that, and it's starting to look really cool. Uh, light's not good in here, but um, yeah, I'm gonna give it uh, another coat later. Then come back and have a look. Okay, this is a closer look. It's it's cured. Uh, you can see uh, it's a kind of burnt burst. Um, yeah, I, li I like the finish. Let's get uh, let's get the hardware back on it. Uh, see what it looks like. Oh, it looks awesome. It's 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 unique. That's for sure. It's unique, I and I like it. So we we didn't use any kind of uh, any stain or anything like that. This is just pure uh, paint stripper gun. So not 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 a bare flame uh, paint stripper gun. Just to create that kind of black outline-ish thing. So uh, I'm putting it back together again. Um, yeah, just like I show you. Uh, got the pickups here. Uh, it's looking good. But um, obviously, if I can upgrade something, um, I, I will if it's possible. So, so we got this kind of normal jack. Uh, I hate these jacks. They always come loose. They always, they always come loose, no matter how tight you do them. There is come loose. I don't know why that is. Um, anyway, a friend of mine uh, bought a load of um, bits for an amp, and he's got some stuff left over. And there's this barrel kind of. I think you get these on acoustic guitars a lot, but these are great if you can pick these up. So uh, it, as long as it fits in the guitar, of course. So some of them, some of them they don't. But fortunately for me, this does fit, and and the connection is like it's really good. So I'm going to put that barrel jack, I think they call it, instead. It's just a really good fitting. I think it's like a stereo fitting, but we'll we'll just wire up what we need. It'll be fine. The only other problem is it doesn't fit through this um, this plate, the barrel jack plate. So I'm just going to make that hole a bit bigger. Um, it's not as difficult as plastic. Also, I like to put in uh, a cutout switch uh, on my guitars. Uh, well, most of them anyway. 
Uh, I got one here that I used on something else, so I'll use this cutout switch. You know, I'm not buying anything extra for this guitar. This guitar is on a serious budget, so it's whatever I got to hand is going in, apart from the pickups, of course. Uh, I'm going to use all the same parts that I used before to put it back together again, except for one of. Uh, what am I going to leave out? Mm, interesting. I'm not decided. Um, guitars like this, usually I just like just use a, a volume pot and forget about everything else. Just use one volume pot. Um, not decided yet. Um, I'm not decided. Uh, I'll come back to you. Yeah, kind of change the knobs as well. Rowan having these ones, um, which look cool, but I have these ones instead. These look cool too. Just gives it a different look. It's time to string it up. Yep, set of nines. A lot of people don't know this. Um, adjusting your truss rod on, on the neck of your guitar, just so you just got a little bit of uh, relief on it. The, if you kind of don't know um, how to do that, obviously there's loads of videos on YouTube that show you how to do that. But the uh, an after effect of um, of Adjusting your truss rod action means that you just got a little bit of relief on your neck. It also feels like it, it, it kind of feels like it slack, slackens your strings a little bit. Um, just a little bit. So um you know bear that in mind. Uh, so kind of you know the it's worth doing a few tweaks here and there because it makes your guitar easier to play. So uh, you know get your action height height correct, not too low, not too high. You know, give your pickups a little bit of space to breathe. Don't have them right up against, right near the strings. You know, back them off a little bit. Give them room to breathe. I got a video about that. Um, check it out. But yeah, this this guitar's done. An Epiphone Gothic Explorer. And well, it, it started out as a as a really a, I would say a, a metal, a heavy metal kind of guitar. Really, the pickups are kind of um, uh, quite overwound. Um, they're they a bit muddy for me. Um, I could I couldn't really I wouldn't be able to use I wouldn't be able to use them. They just sound a little bit muddy. But anyway, it doesn't matter. That's, that, it's not this is not a compare not a com comparison or uh, of a guitar. This is me showing you how I would take a cheap second hand guitar, but a good guitar. This is a good guitar. Just because I purchased it for two hundred pounds on eBay doesn't mean it's a rubbish guitar because it's two hundred pounds. It is worth every penny and some. Um, the wood's good, the neck's good, everything's good, the tuners are good, the hardware's good, the tone pots and the volume pots are good, everything's good. The only thing I changed um, to do with electrics was the input jack, only because I had a better one lying around. Um, and the other, obviously the other thing is, is the pickups. So, um, so I stripped it all down, I burnt it off, uh, you see how I did it, um, and I've kept everything it's it, it I kept it really nice and neat so you can see the edge in there and all I did was when I sanded it down I looked at the I looked at the the wood and I thought mm, it's a bit like for me I could stain it or I could sort of burn it a little bit and give it like a darker finish because I've done that before so I know it works and I thought what I'll do is I just go dark around the edges and lighter on the inside so I've got a kind of um, um, a burst going on a burn burst, as I called it. So yeah, I like the burn burst. I like it. It gives it a real teak feel. Now this kind of this is kind of my this is kind of my seventies rock explorer now instead of the gothic uh, metal mayhem matte black as it was as you see the back of the guitar and the headstock. I've kept the headstock and the logo on it. Um, no need to fool anybody. It is what it is. But it's a great guitar. It's a great guitar. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna run it up. Um, as soon as I've tied it up, perhaps I'll run it up tomorrow, uh, after I've tied it up. Take it to rehears rehearsal tonight, see how it sounds, get back to you uh, at the end of this video with my thoughts. But hey, I'm pretty pleased with that. I am very, in fact I'm very pleased with that. Look at that finish, I love that. So there's only one guitar like this out there. I'm sure you want to hear what the guitar sounds like. Um, and uh, yeah, I want to show I want to show you what it sounds like too. Uh, I took it to rehearsal last night. Uh, it sounded pretty awesome. Um, definitely classic rock. It's got like the kind of Angus AC/DC kind of sound to it. It just sounds just brilliant. So um, uh, because obviously uh, I want to do like a bit of a special on these uh, on the Blues Engines pickups because they are different. They've got different colours, raw nickel. It's a new thing, new direction, all that kind of stuff. I'm going to put that in, in a different video. So. Um, 
because this one's quite long. So, uh, with that in mind, uh, whatever you've seen here, please share, um, please uh, subscribe, comment, do all the usual stuff, and I'll catch you later.